Welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about our land clearing. We didn't take a whole bunch of videos while that was going on, but we did take a bunch of pictures and we do have some shots of uh, the bulldozer working. So, Deb, spin with me. I'll spin with you, babe. <laughs> well, she's not spinning the right I'm, way. I'm, I'm so we're gonna talk about back there, behind me and Deb, how we cleared that. Because everything back there, I'm gonna spin the other way now. I'm not good at spinning. Everything back there used to look like what's behind us now. Okay, so when we first bought the property, it looks like what you see behind Deb. It was thick. You got the typical underbrush here. You got the planted pines. You got some cedars. You got some oaks. Cedar right there. And it was thick. You can see the planted pines over there. And I'm keeping the clearing to my back because I just want to show what we had to work with. It was raw ground. It was uh, just thick, had some hills and stuff in it, but um, we just couldn't see what we had. The land clearing crew that um, I hired asked me, how much do you want cleared? And I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know how much I want cleared. It's about six acres. It's not, a, it's not exactly six. I honestly, I can't tell you exactly what it is because Google Earth has not caught up to our land clearing yet. But my best guesstimate is six and we cleared five because there was some stuff that was just um, some low lying areas that wasn't in planted pine. But he said, how much do you want cleared? And I, and I really didn't know. It's really hard to put markers, you know, your four corners out when you just, you know, it's, it's thick land. You can't fly over it and drop a marker. So we literally told him start push, uh, start bulldozing in that direction and stop. We will watch uh, the trees move as you go and he will call you when to stop. And that's literally how we cleared our land, right? I mean, right. that's- Yeah, that, it was that precise. That's how was, precise we were. So- It was this, call him, stop. So when he he uh, cleared a little bit, we could see, and we, we weren't here when it happened. Um, it took took place over many days. Did, did some of it. We came out here and checked on him and we didn't think he had cleared enough. So again, um, he went into the woods a little bit deeper and I, he said, I'm gonna aim for that tree over there. And when I get there, if you see that tree moving, you know, call me. And that's what we did. That's how we laid out the, the four corners of the property. We're up on the hill and we're looking Northeast right now. And uh, our house pad is, is in front of us. And all this, again, planted pines, everything that you see that's cleared here used to look just like that. So they came in with two bulldozers and a root rake. He started clearing, knocking trees down, and he piled them up. And uh, it was it was 2018 that that happened, July, the summer of 2018. And it was a real wet July. So he had to get a burn permit. It rained so much that he could only burn some of it and he'd have to come back. It, it was frustrating for him. For him. He lived over over an hour away and um, didn't want to tow his equipment back and forth, but uh, he did get it done. Um, he had to come out here with an excavator and move the piles, the burn logs, so they would burn because uh, they would leave pieces as it would rain that wouldn't burn. He got those burn piles down to ashes. He then buried them. You'll see the clay areas, and that's where he dug down and buried the ashes from the burn piles. So, um, and then also I'm sure some stumps or whatever that didn't burn off completely. And then after that, he completely root raked the whole five-ish acres, got it as clean as he could, but there's still some um, small stumps and trees that a root rake on a bulldozer won't get. So after that, I had to go, I had a uh, 38 horsepower Kubota at the time and a five foot box blade. And I took that five foot box blade and I went over every square foot of this property and dug up all those little stumps and all those little sticks that went in between his root rake. And um, that took a while. That was probably two, three days worth of back and forth. Probably some of the most boring tractoring I've ever done in my life. And I also filled in some low areas because a bulldozer is not perfect. But where the pond is right now was a low area. So you really didn't have to bulldoze too much there. But everything to the right of the pond, 
That's the biggest part of our pasture behind the pole barn, up behind the shed, path back there going to the back part of the property. And then this will be our backyard of our house. All of that was bulldozed, box bladed, and limed, planted in grass to get us to the point that we're at now. So in addition to the front five or six acres, we also had a one acre section cleared in the back. It's a food plot, it'll later become pasture or garden. Um, but just for right now, while he was on site, we went ahead and had him clear that. And then when he was also on site, we, we had, had him do a path all the way around the property and three quarters of a mile long, all the way around the property, the width of the bulldozer, as close to the fence as he could, but don't take out any big oaks. One lets us access the fence and also um, gives us a walking trail or a um, ATV or UTV riding trail around the property and um, just kind of uh, delineates the borders of the property and then we can cross fence based on that. Well, at one point in time, we hired somebody else that came in with an, oh. I don't know my equipment. It came in with like, I looked like a little bobcat with a chewing it's, mechanism on it. That's exactly what it was. But they're pretty expensive, $200 an hour uh, for eight hours, but um, our front fence line was completely overgrown. We had a lot of areas where we just couldn't even access the border of the property. I wanted to get him in here first before the bulldozer. We could just kind of assess the property a little bit better. So yeah, we did have that expense first. Then we had the bulldozer, um, the land clearing crew come in. The excavator was mainly to dig the holes for the ashes and then to repile the logs from, for uh, burning them. I got some cool pictures, some cool trail cam pictures of some deer with the logs smoldering in the background um, because it was all brand new to the deer, you know, it had been forever. Uh, this had always been uh, planted pines or some sort of thick um, secondary forest and uh, now it was cleared and they were coming out to check it out. So we had quite a few deer out here in the front pasture. Um, we had feeders and stuff out here. We, we don't do that so much anymore. We try to keep them to the back. It's more secluded back there, although we do like to see them. Um, we do want to have gardens out here in the front. So we're trying not to attract deer to the front, but deer do what deer do. So um, they will come to the front. We've actually seen um, footprints or tracks of deer in, in the pole barn, up underneath the pole barn. And you'll see them actually walk by the shed. Hey, Lily. This is our neighbor dog, hey, Lily. Lily. And so we sweet. love Lily. We love Lily and her sister, Bella. But Lily Sometimes is Bella's behind Lily and Bella's a pit bull and she's a great pit bull, definitely sweetest dog on earth, but oh my goodness, is she full of herself. Yeah, so one thing that I, I'd like to talk about while we're talking about land clearing is, we probably talked to four or five different land clearing folks or companies or, and they all do it a little bit differently. They like to do it one of two ways, obviously, by the, by the acre or by the hour, but no one can tell you how many hours it is to do an acre. So in our opinion, it was best to hire somebody to do it by the acre. Um, another thing was some people wanted to come in and clear your land and pile up your brush and all your trees, right? We mainly had planted pines. So we had like six inch diameter pines that were 20, 30 foot tall. And that's what was in the piles, that and a little bit of brush that was in between the pines. But some people just wanted to do that, just the bulldozer work, and they did not want to burn they didn't want to bury the ashes and their price would be equivalent to someone else that was 100% come in and they do everything. There's people out there that are amateurs, I would say, with bulldozers. They have a bulldozer because they like equipment and they're doing it as a side job and they're not professionals with it. So they're not nearly as skilled with it. So paying them an hour is not the same as paying someone else who's got 20 or 30 years experience running a bulldozer because yeah, bulldozers lowering down the blade and pushing over trees, but there's a science to it. And I watched them, you know, they got to hit them pines from a certain angle or else they leave too much of the taproot in. So all land clearing companies and individuals are not created equal. The cheapest guy is not always the best, but don't discount the cheapest guy. Find out what they're going to do for you. We had some dirt movement done as well, and I expected laser leveled pads for um, my buildings that I that I have built and am going to build and um, that, that wasn't part of the deal. He, he didn't, he wasn't going to laser level. He was going to 
put some dirt in low places and make it look flat by the eye, but it wasn't gonna be contractor ready to pour concrete. We have dealt with a lot of different people, local people on different projects, and they've all been above board. We've not had any problems with anybody. They've not had any problems with us. I mean, we don't, like you said, we don't have a bad experience. No, no, I'm certainly not saying that our land clearing was a bad experience, but it was a new experience for us. Um, we probably would have asked some more questions. I probably would have wanted a little bit more detailed root raking and a little bit more land leveling, even if I had to pay a little bit more, um, because a lot of the costs with land clearing is bringing the people onto your property. And if you have additional work for them, um, then is the time to do it when the equipment's on the property because then they won't charge you that 350 um, transportation fee. Um, but you don't know what you don't know. So if you don't know um, that you need to box blade for two days uh, and you don't have a tractor, I mean, I had a tractor and I had a box blade, so it wasn't a big deal, but it would have been a big deal if I had to go rent a tractor, if I had to go rent a mini excavator or something to get the property ready because the next step was putting down lime and uh, planting Bahia grass seed um, because land with slope needs to have some sort of vegetation on it or else it's gonna erode. And, and we wanted to stop as much erosion as possible, as quick as possible because it takes eons to build topsoil. And the last thing you want is all the topsoil, all the topsoil from your hill to end up in your low areas. So, it was imperative that we get something, some sort of green cover planted. And uh, we did iron clay peas for an acre or two after we cleared the land and it was beautiful. It was beautiful green. Uh, every time I've cleared some land, whether it's been on a hunting lease or uh, our own property that first year, I don't know if the nutrients get unlocked um, immediately by that line, but that first year things just grow so great. And then um, that's kind of, Kind of wraps up what I wanted to say about land clearing. You got anything? I'm good. You, you knocked it all out. If you like this video, please click subscribe. Please click the like button. We hope to have more videos like this coming your way soon.